Okay, so welcome to everybody listening now and in the future. Um, this is a brief Q&A and a little bit of an illustration of our Foundations and Integrated Pre- and Perinatal Dynamics course. Um, this is for just informational purposes so you can get a sense of what it is that we do. Okay, so by this here, this is a slide that just introduces me a little bit more. Um, I have now many years in maternal and child health, and I started out as a body worker. I started out as a massage therapist and a craniosacrotherapist, and I, I had a client remember her birth on my table, which is what happened in 1999, and I didn't know that could happen. And that that was such an experience for me that I, it drew me into studying more. And ever since then, which is now almost 23 years, uh, I've, I've studied uh, tenaciously and without pause <laughs> um, pre, the pre and perinatal somatic work. I've studied with many of the, of the people in the field, um, uh, which I'll show you our lineage later, but I'm a somatic experiencing practitioner and then I have studied trauma resolution work additionally with Anna Chitty and polarity. And uh, I have studied all, many years with Ray Castellino. I'm an advanced family therapist um, with his organization. And so, and so I just combine all of those things. I'll talk a little bit more about uh, the, the combination of all the things that I do, but I really want to give a, a, a big thank you to Lois. I've worked, I worked with her pretty closely before I had to move to Virginia to take care of my family. And um, it was from my work with her, pretty much I feel like the, I have a deeper understanding of what happens at births. Um, even though I st studied birth psychology and the baby's experience for over 20 years, I think that by learning more about, you know, being with families as a midwife, I, th I think that that's what has brought the training to fruition. Uh, so uh, I'll have Lois, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit more? Sure, hi. So as it says here, I'm a midwife with um, 40 some years of experience and um, I decided to train in France because I wanted to combine being a midwife and nursing together. And when I was in France, uh, a couple came in who'd had a miscarriage and asked to meet me. And they said, when you finished your studies, um, you really should go to Booth Maternity Center in Philadelphia because the midwife we had was wonderful and it was a wonderful place. So I did, I came back there to the United States and did a refresher program and became certified and um, um, was very fortunate to be able to work at Booth first because there I saw that the care could be high quality, uh, midwifery based, um, uh, very respectful, um, just, ideal, I think. And when I saw that birth could be like that, it affected me forever. And it's changed my whole life. So I went on from there to, uh, I worked at Booth for four years, had a home birth practice, um, and also was the director of a beautiful out of hospital birth center. And then I ended up in Vermont about 20 years ago. Um, so I have uh, training as a lactation counselor and also a childbirth educator, which I still do now and enjoy very much. So, so Lois and I began working together and we, um, we co-taught and she would catch the babies and I would catch families that were having difficulty in the Healing Arts Center, which I built in Vermont. Um, it was there that we learned that our combination was a good one, and we vowed to try to create something together, um, 
especially after Lois was able to retire from attending births. Mm -hmm. So we, our first forage into this domain, we, we saw we called simply prenatal and perinatal dynamics. And we've since you know, divided it up into foundations and integrated, and I'm going to explain that to you. But our, our teaching was all around creating safety and connection with birthing families starting preconception. And so our first module is really on that relational field and creating a gracious space with families and really tracking early trauma and trauma in the space, trauma in our people, uh, much like uh, I, th I think it was uh, Kate that was saying, you know, working so much with the generational aspects of ourselves, um, we really began to try to piece together how do we combine the midwifery model of care with trauma resolution and the baby's experience? So we, we teach dif difficult birth patterns and, and actually we also teach physiological birth and what that is like as a pattern in the body and in the nervous system. And we also teach touch, different varieties of touch and uh, ways that we can listen deeply to people we teach also field dynamics, which are part of the pre-perinatal work, dependent on osteopathy and uh, really our innate blueprint in our bodies. And so we teach how to be with families starting preconception based on these, uh, the, these, these tools. Pre and perinatal somatic healing is a, is a, it's a somatic pattern language. It, this is what we repeat often in the training, that it's about posture, it's about shape, it's about who, how we're shaped, our layers of experience, how that has influenced our nervous system and our worldview and our beliefs in ourself and in birth and, and, and how we connect uh, with our children, with ourselves, with our, our partners and with the greater wider world. We, it's all about movements and gestures. It's, it's, so, it's a somatic space. It's so somatic. So it's not in the brain. It's not a cognitive thing. So teaching what that looks like uh, is really part of the training and helping people understand, especially from the inside out, what does that mean? And it's less about the information and more about what happens in your body. And and the layers of your experience. So each with each module, uh, you deepen into that particular topic, which I'm going to give you the outline. We also track language as metaphor, um, how people talk about themselves and their world. Um, often we tell our stories quite unconsciously. Uh, even as adults, we will show the baby's story. Uh, through our language, through our gestures and movements and postures. Um, and then we teach a, a quality of presence. It's, it's that quality of presence which will help what the family needs to bring to heal. And we teach a degree of body empathy, how you feel in your body as a practitioner, uh, so that you can begin to track what's happening in the wider, greater, wider field, which we call the surround, but also what's going on in the family. Basically, the earliest trauma, um, and actually the more I work with people, uh, the more our ancestors, I see the ancestral trauma, the intergenerational trauma. These are undigested experiences from our families. That, that want to heal, they, they were living in them, quite honestly, uh, more, it would nice to bring all this to consciousness, but um, I find that uh, there's good things about our family lives and our history and our ancestors, and there are things that really want to complete, they want to finish, they want to be integrated. And we, we'll, you'll learn about what that means in our training, but basically they're imprints. Imprints are memories and how they show up in our bodies and therefore our psyches and our, our worldview. So this, 
idea that healing wants to happen, it's a part of the integration imperative that it's like a, an expectation of, of the nervous system that it, it wants to complete in some way. Um, so conditions in our lives will occur that will trigger that healing to happen. So we work with the conditions that arise and we name them as, we name the things that want to heal as memories. So uh, this is the lineage that informs the work that Lois and I have developed. Um, in the somatic world, it's John and Anna Chitty with their full spectrum bodywork approach. And I still study with Anna. Um, John was my direct mentor for seven years. And it's his through, his, through his lens of the uh, embryo and the yin and yang and the autonomic nervous system uh, that's one of my primary tools for you. It's just really understanding autonomic nervous system states. John Chitty taught me that state change is the name of the game. You want to work with state and understand that. And a lot of things that happen to us as prenates and as babies, if nobody's there is naming them, they uh, ignite in our system and we're just there with them confused. Is this me? Is this something else? And so uh, what we try to do is just recognize the state that's connected to that experience. And it's often survival energy, meaning fight, flight, or freeze are variations of those. So for each um, layer of your experience, we teach that there is a survival state that can arise if there's been something overwhelming, um, interventions at birth, difficulties prenatally, and there's so many variations that can happen there. Um, and then I have this lineage of uh, trauma resolution in the somatic experiencing field. Abby Blakesley is still my direct supervisor and she, um, and she, and I talk a lot about the work itself as well. She and I will be co-teaching uh, this year. And then I have many people in the pre and perinatal field, Myrna Martin, Ray Castellino, Mary Jackson, and Tara Blasco. And I have a lot of colleagues now, um, but these are all strong influences uh, in the work. And like I said, Lois, uh, trees ice, the midwifery model of care is a really important part of our training. And, uh, and she's helped bring more of the details to life. So I think that what needs to happen if you're not a midwife, there are a couple on our call tonight, but what needs to happen is you need to know what happens at birth and you need to know what those interventions are. And you need to know like when a couple comes to you with a difficult birth and they tell you what happens, you, I, I prefer as practitioners that I would train that you would know what those are so that you can affirm that's hard. That premature rupture of membranes is one of our most difficult patterns. That fast birth was hard. That long birth, the, the need for those interventions that condition. And I think that when Lois and I sit with families and name these things, there's so much relief that they feel. So th that I want, that's why you know, it's really wonderful to teach with Lois. She brings this wisdom of 40 years. Lois, is there anything more you'd like to say? Yes, well, I wrote this. Thank you, Kate. I wrote this about midwifery. I'm so in love with midwifery and with um, birthing. So I wrote this about, oh, well, I don't know, 15 years ago. Childbirth represents the coming together of our hopes and wonderings in an extraordinary turning which connects us with all the generations and our global community. I believe that childbirth preparation should be grounded in the balance between understanding and inspiration, 
one that frees us to relax into our bodies, ancient ways of knowing and places technology at the service of our experience. Midwifery emphasizes that there is profound value in sharing information and decision-making in mutual respect. Okay, so these, these people in particular um, are, have heavily influenced our work together. And you will often hear me talk about Ray Castellino and Anna and John Chitty. And I particularly credit Anna Chitty for bringing our understanding of the blueprint um, and how that, that is our, the word that she uses for the health in our system. And I think that for trauma therapists like you, Kate, or midwives, um, it's, it's easy for us to see the problems. What's harder is for us to see the health. And so we give you that lens. Uh, we give you the lens to see and feel into what's working and what's right and really understand that when there's a challenge or a trauma, there is an, a counter vortex that arises. And to really help you feel that and find that both in yourselves and in the people, people that come to you. And at the, when Ray passed, uh, was, was nearing his death, he was really now naming variations of deeper and deeper levels of health uh, that he could feel because he was, that was his gift was his body feelings and his empathy, body empathy and being able to track the fields of people, what, what happens in between people. And that we have these tidal rhythms in our body. It's osteopathy, but it's also just, you know, our own rhythmic being. We are tidal beings. We have ways where we expand and, and gather or our lives are action and rest. Um, he was able to identify even deeper rhythms uh, within the family. So he uh, taught group dynamics, uh, that was his specialty. And he developed what we call the womb surround process group. Um, but it has really evolved to really be focusing on how we can connect together and in, co in cooperation uh, for the greater benefit of, of everyone. Uh, but I really credit Ray with turning the birth psychology world around and heading it into a more subtle, deeper, and more and a, a practice that focuses on health. I'm one of those practitioners that straddles the world. Um, I have, I started when, when it was a little bit more cathartic and the tools were bigger, uh, a little more painful. He created uh, a much more subtle approach, which is a part of our training as well. He was the one that um, I helped identify that we live in layers of experience. They start preconception uh, with the ancestors, but they, they show up in layers. So there's a con preconception layer, conception. That's a very important layer of, of how we come into form. Are we welcome? What is our prenatal experience? And there's a lot that can happen prenatally. Uh, and then there's our birth. And even in the birth, there's layers. There's how we, um, how we birth and how we are born, what happens to us there. And then what happens afterwards? Babies are consistently telling me that that's the place where there's the most difficulty, especially if they've been separated. Uh, but, but there can be difficulty along the whole path. And when we take a professional training, this, these are our layers of experience. The work really focuses on resources or what we call what things that are help us or support us, um, that, what works for us, what's, where is the health in the system. We really slow the pace. So there's pacing that you learn about how to really slow because trauma will speed up the pace. And so what you really want to do is, is notice when they're speeding up and slowing down. And we teach you skills about how to help slow the pace. 
with someone. As, and we also teach you about connection, how to make connection, how to do that in a way that's appropriate and feels good to the person or the family that you're with. And a chitty calls it the sweet spot. Um, all this uh, starts preconception. And so we also teach you their attachment patterns. Well, this is one of the most common intergenerational patterns that we can name, and it's been heavily studied. So we teach you about the, the attachment patterns. And then we look at many different patterns that can show up in our people starting preconception. Um, Lois and I have a way of doing that. We call maternity ghosts and trauma echoes. And we, we teach about creating a trauma sensitive intake when you're with families so that you can identify where there might be possible patterns that might get ignited uh, during pregnancy, labor, delivery, and after. We teach you about some of the prenatal issues. Our training is only uh, no, now it's six modules, so it's 19, 18 days long. A traditional pre and perinatal training is about 52 to 54 days long. Um, we do a, an abbreviated version, uh, and we combine it, like I say, with the midwifery model of care. So we do, I do teach you about some of the baby's experience of the prenatal time. And we teach you about chemical imprints and what can happen inside the womb. And a lot of things that happen for us are very impersonal. But yet, if there's no one there helping the baby and the family make sense of them, it becomes very personal. Mothers and partners begin to feel compromised, like there's something wrong with them. And babies will also feel the same. So you as practitioner can come in and demystify some of it and um, alleviate some of the, the challenge uh, and the pain of what experience and, and help restore, uh, restore the person that you're with to a sense of well-being. You can help them make sense of their experience. We teach you all about binds, double binds. Um, they start preconception. Um, they often feel like a stuck place inside ourselves. And we teach you a little bit about family dynamics, mainly because that's what you are in the midst of when somebody comes with their baby. So trauma essentially disconnects um, from self, from others, from a system, from the field. And what, what we try and do is find ways uh, for you to recognize the pre and perinatal layers and then uh, ways that we can reorient inside ourselves trauma resolution skills that will in small doable pieces integrate what was the challenge and then rebuild a sense of trust and connection with self, with partner, with baby. But working with birth trauma is not as simple as straightforward um, trauma resolution when you're working with just one person. I like to talk about working with birth trauma uh, a lot like playing three-dimensional chess. When I was a girl, we had a three-dimensional chess board. It had multiple three layers and pieces could come from above and below. And so you're, you're tracking many things. Uh, you're tracking the, the birthing parent, you're tracking the partner, you're tracking the baby, uh, you're tracking the space that you're feeling and you're tracking yourself. So um, each person is a resonant part of a whole and your job is to bring them into connection. It looks kind of like this. I like this image of the concentric rings that are overlapping because this is literally how it feels to me when I'm in a space uh, with, a, with a family when there's birth trauma. So if you're, you're tracking the mother and her concerns and fears and exhaustion and overwhelm, 
when you're tracking the baby and their story. I, ha I had a mom come the other day with her baby and she came from far. Like I get people that put their baby in the car and drive a long time to see me, which is a great honor for me. And uh, I had, I worked with the mom. I listened to her. I listened to the baby. I talked to the baby about what happened. I did craniosacral therapy and the mom texted me the day after. And then again, the day after that, and just to say, I have a changed baby. She's suddenly sleeping nine hours a night. I mean, she said, is it possible that what you did created this level of subtle in my baby? I'm like, yeah, but it's, that was a really big shift. Like there's something that happened, I feel like, so that the baby felt seen and heard and understood. That kind of thing will settle a family very quickly. So you're tracking everyone in the space and it can be a lot. So what we offer is a foundations level is that what I call it. And we used to call it the introduction, but I really think it's a foundation. And in the foundations course, uh, we'll give you a taste of all the skills. It's mostly about building connection, tracking the space, learning touch skills, which we do through the internet, believe it or not. <laughs> learning about the layers of support, learning a little bit about um, how we track birth trauma, and then you have your own baby experience. We get, we give you a chance to drop into your own baby self. And um, I really wanted that for you. I, I wanted you to really get a sense of, of your own baby experience. Because that's what you're heading into. If you come to the training, you, you drop into your own early layers. That's the best way to learn. We have a saying in the pre perinatal, and um, actually, and it's in our online healing school is come study, learn, and heal. And that's what learning in, is about. It's also about healing and working with yourself and your own experience from the inside out. That's what makes the best practitioners. Um, our full integrated uh, prenatal and perinatal dynamics training um, addresses these layers, preconception, conception, prenatal dynamics, what physiological birth. And, and you, you would think that, oh, that's so simple, but it's not. There's so many variations on normal in that domain. These are physiological birth without interventions. And quite, it's quite easy for there to be difficulty there. Um, and then we have chemical imprints. These are things like chemicals that are used during birth, anesthesias, analgesias, pitocin, uh, and, and induction chemicals. I want you to know all of those and how they're used and what they can do for the mother and for the baby as an imprint. And may also include some other dynamics in there about womb dynamics. And of course the placenta, which is one of my biggest fashions. Um, we also teach about birth dynamics too, which is mechanical and surgical imprints, uh, the things that happened during births, but what does that do from the baby's experience? And then we have a little bit of afterbirth experiences. Uh, and we have guest speakers that come in, my clients that come to tell their birth stories. And we also have um, other professionals that come and talk about things that we think that you, is important for you to know. If you haven't been in the birth world, especially things that you can do to help your clients uh, should they need extra support. So just by way of summarizing what... Um, what I'd like you to consider is uh, a new model of care. This is what Lois and I are working on. We'd like it to make a new professional, a professional that can set up practice next to hospitals and really provide continual, the, the continuity of care, 
uh, starting preconception with varieties of, of therapies. Uh, if you're a body worker, all the better. But really to prepare families for births and then catch them afterwards, just like she and I did when we first met 20 years ago. But in this preconception, uh, in this model, preconception is a trauma-informed health model. Um, we help you learn what your adverse experiences were and then help you feel the resilience there. Uh, we learn, like I say, to integrate those ghosts and echoes and understand our own baby experiences. Uh, our model is really uh, focusing on promoting conscious conception and then understanding what happens for people if conception was a surprise or not intended. Uh, so we really work with helping you understand uh, the, imp the impacts of, of what happens around discovery if indeed the pregnancy wasn't welcome. Uh, we teach prenatal bonding and then what the impact of uh, interventions are, and then really ideally how to create repair um, in those in around birth, and then how to help with some early parenting. Uh, it's a trauma prevention and resolution model. Um, it, it, it creates a support network and a scaffolding for you as a professional, uh, a pre and perinatal professional, but it includes the baby's experience. And, and we have found that, that if you address the trauma early and you create this, this level of consciousness that includes the baby, that you can re repair difficulty. Many people seek us out when they are pregnant again after a difficult delivery. And, and we can really help you with skills to help this whole family connect and then get off to a really good start. So if you address all these things, you get a better start so that people conceived, carried and born this way have a greater chance of achieving their purpose and finding happiness in life. We feel that practitioners of all kinds can learn this model of care. They can be trained to do pre and perinatal intakes and recognize signs and symptoms of earliest trauma. So uh, I'm wondering um, if we might save a birth story for, for later. I'll see if there are any questions. Lois, do you have an idea of a story you'd like to tell? You oh, want yes. But okay. We'll go ahead with the questions and see. Okay. Yeah. We tell a lot of stories in the training. We tell, I tell stories about working with babies and working with people who come to me to heal early trauma. And we tell a lot of birth stories too. So welcome. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Kim. Hello. Sorry, <laughs> I jumped in late. I was on another call, but it's really good to be here. That's okay. We are all here. Yeah. And I, I just did, did a little, um, a sort of a little overview of the work and Lois. And yeah. So, and now we're open to questions. This is a time to ask your Q&A. And just so you know, your questions are being recorded. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. So who has a question? I, I, I do, if it's okay to jump right in. Jump in. Um, yeah, so I, I work as a, a midwife um, here in Australia. And um, yeah, I, I recognized, um, I guess, fairly uh, a few years ago, the need for some uh, other tools and resources um, to help me, first of all, manage my own experience of being uh, in in the birth space and working so intimately with families. Um, and so that took me, besides lots of other stuff, to cut a long, long story short, I started to um, learn Hakomi um, psychotherapy and have been working with, with that and integrating that into my practice. And then um, I did the PPNE course. And so I've been working oh. with that, which has been amazing and 
just so great. And, um, and now I'm diving into neuro effective um, touch, um, which I'm starting that on the weekend. Um, so I guess my question is, um, yeah, I, I guess where I'm sitting is this kind of uh, place of um, really wanting to be more hands on and intentional with how I work with the baby and the mother and I'm already kind of in that in that field. Um, so I'm working in home birth and, um, you know, that's very much the framework that I'm, uh, I'm setting up. Uh, it's really a consciousness model. It's really how do we work with what's presenting itself right here and now. And so I've recognized for myself as I really start to integrate a lot of my own imprints, which surprisingly are becoming more and more obvious to me how they play out in my behaviors. It's just like, <laughs> holy, holy, like I didn't realize that <laughs> that's still like, yes, so, you know, aspects that are still quite unconscious actually. And so um, really wanting like and noticing how my whole nervous system is really trying to heal and yet touching that edge of I don't know how and yeah so there's that piece and there's also that interface of coming into contact with um, you know in a very intimate space in prenatals and in the birth space holding space for birth where I, I notice my own imprinting getting activated still, how to resource around that, and then how to recognize and really work in a constructive way with the traumas that many families are showing up with and the babies too. So yeah. um, there's a lot there. So <laughs> I guess the ah, what's the question is, um, will this, is this course more of an overview or will it actually provide the the kind of the hands-on skills for me to further develop in that way well yeah I can hear <laughs> your I can I can hear your hunger um so so yes we provide skills this is a skills-based course yeah um the what what we the basic skills like I teach five kinds of touch like, I'm not sure what Aline Alapierre is teaching. I really like her and her work. Um, but um, I do, a this is, I, if, you know, if I have my way, we'd all be together and we could do exchanges mm -hmm. with each other, but we don't because we're in COVID and it yeah. is, it is learnable. Um, as I think that um, Heather can attest being our, our student and a graduate here, um, uh, it is all learnable via Zoom. But your basic skills are learning about how trauma feels, like what, what are the units? How is it that the autonomic nervous system responding? Yeah. And how can you slow the pace enough and bring enough support? Yeah. Um, and the support is the quality of your presence. Yes. And yeah. you're witnessing and you're like, oh, well, this is a memory that comes from this layer of your experience and right. um i feel like uh learning to work with babies uh manual therapy for example um and birth trauma is another course um so that that uh, the uh, learning body work for babies is different but what you will learn is what the babies how do, how the baby expresses themselves in the context of of trying to communicate about their experience mm -hmm. um, now ray castellino was a master of that and understood that ba babies are sentient and constantly communicating and they really want to tell you their story mm -hmm. so you will learn some of that from me because that is what i do for a living and that is what um it's some of that comes through in the training I don't know, Heather, do you want to speak to your experience of learning uh, to regarding Lindsay's question? Well, what really came out for me was was that you were talking some about your own activation in it. And and one of the coolest things I found is 
is learning about kind of the two layers of support. And so when I'm working with someone else, I can bring in instances with Kate and with Lois and with some of the other other classmates that I had so that I have that support with me when I'm working with someone else so that activation doesn't happen as much for me in those instances. Um, yeah, and, and you you gain a lot of experience in the modules. You mm -hmm. you, de you, leap, you deepen into yourself and you recognize your own imprints. <laughs> the recognition is amazing. And, and then we give you skills of how to integrate it. Uh, so um, I, I, I can say that there's an in-depth outline on the website. Um, I'll follow up with um, a link for everybody so that you can look in detail at some of the things that we teach. Um, like I, I don't know if that answers your question, Lindsay. Um, I think so. I think it's just given me the clarity of um, it's actually the work uh, more with the, the babies because I feel like the nervous system piece and my own felt experience of that, I'm fairly well resourced at this point and kind of just really refining and fine tuning. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of that will come from the work I'm going to do with the um, with the neuroeffective touch, at least mm -hmm. my my sense is that. But I think there's the piece that's missing for me is um, the working with the babies um, uh, in a you... more in, intentional way. Although there's a lot of intuitive sense I have about that, but just to bring, um, yeah, more of a structure and more of a, uh, a conscious knowing of, yeah around that so well i think that our baby diploma program our treating babies diploma program is about to be launched but our major star in that is from australia oh jonathan evans oh, okay. is an osteopath that we're we're using his curriculum and he's in australia so you should look oh, him up i will definitely write down his name thank you yeah, his academy is called Kindred B. Kindred B. Kindred B. And uh, and we're teaching uh, a treating babies course and, and baby diploma program. And we're also inviting professionals from sleep and lactation and other forms of body work so that you can get a more, much more hands-on approach to working with babies. Beautiful. But, uh, but I will repeat what Ray Castellino often said is that babies do not come by themselves. They come with the family. Yeah. And um, I often find that if I treat the mother, the baby gets better. Mm. Um, and so I, I wouldn't isolate the baby. I would, I would, yeah, try to find a way to, you have a lot of training, Lindsay, try to find a way to give yeah. a, to work with the whole family. Thank you. Thank you so much. What was his name again, Kate, please? Which one? Uh, John. Jonathan Evans. Jonathan Evans. Okay. Yeah. I think his website here, I'll put it in the chat. Um, Mer, he's going to be offering his kindred um, treating babies and treating the birth course along with live uh, coaching through the online school kindredb.com he has online courses you can sign up for them yeah and take beautiful. yourself through thank you yeah all right any other questions i just wanted to say from her question this is celeste hi celeste. um when you were talking about like you one of somebody said something about if you treat the mom the baby gets better mm -hmm. and um that really resonate my kids are older but there was trauma in every <laughs> aspect of those. Um, and as I've done my own healing work, um, they're getting better. And yes, we're doing stuff with them too, but I don't think without my, the things that I'm doing with my own healing mm -hmm. that we would have gotten to that level. Um, I do have a question too, though. Um, I know that and especially with my myofascial training. And uh, I really do like 
intuition is probably one of my strong suits. Um, just kind of sensing and knowing. And um, so when something is too rigid, I find that I, I have a hard time. Like I did a healing touch, which is like uh, almost like medical Reiki. And you have to go through each of these. And it's very like, this is what you do. And I liked the energy part of that. But the um, too structured where everything had to be in a, I felt like I was a little bit um, like that wasn't the best way for me. <laughs> so I don't know if you can speak a little bit to that as far as what you're what you're doing. Well, we give you the map, but there's the map and then there's the territory. And so the territory is broad and unique and subjective to everyone. The map we give are basically the tools of the autonomic nervous system. And I can teach you some about broadly about the patterns that you will encounter. But even today, you know, even this week or last week, Lois will call me up and say, I saw something I've never seen before, <laughs> you know, and I, I will too. I will see things and I'll be like, they're very unique. And, and so there's no way for us to be rigid. I mean, I feel like that's to a detriment. And this is an inside out model. Uh, and so having an intuitive sense, having a, a, in fact, one of our sayings is, this is a search and restore mission. We restore the intuition and the sense of self to the primarily the birthing parent and her partner. Uh, so if you have strengths in intuition and um, are a body worker, I'm guessing you also have body empathy and that is also a major tool uh, in this work. So I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, I, I think yeah. it does. And even through my myofascial work, you know, I see people, um, they're remembering things mm -hmm. and they're, you know, kind of reliving things. Um, so yeah, I just looking for just a better way to develop and even present this so that people can understand what I'm doing. I think that's maybe even another piece I'm looking for. It's like, you know, the, what do you do? Well, you know, <laughs> you know so how, I think in that respect, respect, the map and kind of the pathway will probably help me get to where I'm able to help the people I wanna help. Cause that's really where I'm at is, is being able to re reach and find those people. Yeah, good. Lois, did you want to say something too, or? Oh, I resonate so much with your question. And for me, um, we're, we're at the beginning of this um, combining these um, approaches. And so it is really new and um, I try to share this information with people wherever it seems appropriate. And it's kind of fun for me to see what their response is going to be because many times it goes right over their heads. There isn't a convenient label. It's something that's out of their comfort zone. Um, and I keep going on because I really believe in it as pretty Soon after I heard about this whole field, I thought, well, this really makes sense. This just makes sense. So why not be open to it? And in the 20 years since, that's only become more and more the case. So I think it's so worth studying and gaining the knowledge and the skills um, because that's how it's going to grow. And I think that mothers and babies need this so much. So um, I think you'll find a way. And the other thing is that people begin to seek you out because as knowledge is shared about it, oh, I worked with somebody who is wonderful and really helped me and helped my baby. 
Um, I think that's how people come to understand what we're offering. That's one way. I really would encourage you. And um, one final Thank way you. I want, I would like to say that just to address both Celeste and Lindsay's questions, the training is designed for you to have um, clinical observation. With each of our modules, which are three days long, there's an optional fourth day. And that's in that, on that day, we invite families to come. And hopefully this will be in person with a hybrid option, online option. But you'll be able to watch Lois and I work with families. And if body work's needed for the baby, I'll be doing that. But uh, you'll be able to watch us do intakes and treat families. Um, and this way, you'll get a sense more like of watching and then being having inquiry. We can, we're going to unpack. We're going to film and unpack each of these families that come. And it will give you a chance to learn that way as well. Um, because you'll see what it takes uh, to, to do the work and you'll be learning these, these chunks along the way. So will be that, that be at your facility, Kate, those um, three day? We've, we've rented a healing arts space north of Washington, DC. Um, it's sort of not quite halfway between Lois and I. She's in Vermont, I'm in Virginia and it's near Heather. Uh, so we rented a, a healing art space called Blueberry Gardens. It's an octagonal space uh, and near the Baltimore, Washington airport and other airports in the Washington, D.C. area. It seemed more accessible um, for people coming and it, and it was near my teaching team. Any other questions? Yeah, it's kind of spread out over a year, Kate, those course, those times. Uh, we meet every three months for six courses. So it's 18, I think it's 18 months long. So we meet every, uh, every three months and then every third Thursday, uh, we meet to practice uh, uh, in the months that are off. Uh, Kim? Yeah. Hi, Kate. Um, so I'm a massage therapist. That's my licensure to, to touch. And I did the biodynamic cranial sacral training. Nice. Um, and actually, uh, no Christiana. Ah, okay. And, yeah. And so, you know, I know this is an intro course. And, you know, um, just wanted to understand how the intro course which you take how that leads into the a, a larger training mm -hmm. and so I um you know doing the cranial sacral um you know up ledger trained um mm -hmm. foundationally and then I was guided to the biodynamic or drawn to it and um and so one of the other modalities I work with is Arvigo therapy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but I work with women who try to, are trying to conceive, not just conception, it's a, a lot of other things involved in the work, conception and then pregnancy and then postpartum care. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, yeah. And so, um, and I noticed like, you know, when I got done with the biodynamic training, I noticed that children started showing up like a couple of them and I thought hmm, that's interesting because all the time before I was I had a you know I've never had children I had a little bit of an aversion to because I was like okay am I going to be able to do this but they started coming and I really enjoyed like working with them and so that's what drew me to the pre and perinatal um, I did a birth process workshop with Myrna and um, that's a prerequisite also for a much bigger training. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to kind of like um, get an idea or feel for how your program is. Um, mm -hmm. and, and this obviously, would, would the intro be similar to a birth, birth process? Is it different than a birth process? Mm -hmm. And 
how much longer that 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 more in-depth training is, which I think you kind of already answered before. Yes. Well, I was Myrna Martin's uh, student for 10 years, was her coordinator and her one of her primary apprentices. And so um, I learned from her to John Chitty and Anna Chitty and Ray Castellino. So um, yes, so I wanted to tell you the foundations course or the intro is kind of like my process workshop. Um, I, I have, I decided to skill build. Um, so it, I wanted to provide skills that I felt like you're not going to learn anywhere. Um, and if you've taken the biodynamic craniosacral training, you may have them. They were learning how to build a resonant field and you learn some tracking skills, which you will probably already have. Um, and then you learn, like I said, five different kinds of touch. Um, I don't teach the cranial work, but I teach a variety of skill of deeper touch and lighter touch and moving touch and um, a revitalizing touch that I learned studying near death. And so, um, but I, you do do a mini birth sequence. It is, um, we do teach, uh, give you a chance to drop into your baby self and to have a, a little tiny uh, experience, not as big as a birth process workshop um, so that you can feel the, what it's like to drop into the early, your early experience. And uh, so it is four days long. And right now, our next one is in March, and it's um, the 10th to the 13th, and it's, uh, it's nearly full. But we have another one in May, um, and that one is open still. That's all online, though, right? That's correct. Is that correct? Is well, the one in, in person? The, well, the one in May, I've, I hope we'll go back to in person. Okay. I'm... I miss being an in-person and I'm tired of being scared of COVID. And um, I'm hoping by then uh, we can go back to having, to building a sense of the interpersonal space um, that's so intimate that we need for this work. Yeah. How, however, I will say that we have learned how to do this online. Um, we taught our whole first year of, I mean, year and a half of training with Heather uh, was in that cohort online and it was remarkable. So it's not um, undoable, um, but we, I do want the training to be in person and it will have a hybrid option for people who are wanting to, we have people all over the world that want to come. I'm not going to say no to anyone that if they feel like they'd like to be with us. Um, so we'll figure that out. I do have tech people that are quite good that will help us. Um, but uh, yeah, so if you are interested in the pre perinatal training of Myrna Martin, that is a, uh, I think she's teaching five uh, works, five uh modules and that will be very similar to what I'm doing so how does and I think you I, I think I was trying to pay attention to how you said that your that the training would be is it over the course of a eight the 18 months the, the, it, the more, more in-depth training yes it's I, I I want us to meet every three months I'm trying to make it doable and affordable and uh, the pre perinatal training is that you're taking, if you take Myrna Martin's training, is five days. And it's designed for you to learn to be a pre and perinatal womb surround process group <laughs> facilitator. Okay. And you will have a much, much more in depth sort of what those patterns are and how to facilitate uh, change in adults. It's a good training. Um, uh, and I, I think that if you're interested in that, that's great. But, and that's the thing is I'm not exactly sure what, 
path I'm interested in, oh. in taking. And that's why, you know, I really wanted to come on and, you know, I've heard such wonderful things about you and your classes from Christiana. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it was a life-changing experience for Christiana. And yeah, I know. she has taken it on and she's making a living. Um, seeing, I mean, not as a full-time job yet, but she gives me reports that the couples coming to her to heal birth trauma are getting better. Uh, yeah. and, and they get better quickly. I think it's a method that really works. And not for 100% of the people, we do have some that have, it hasn't has been as effective as I would like. But I see it making a big difference. But the, the training is, uh, we do a teach a lot of midwifery skill, like understanding the, the what the imprints are from for a birthing parent and from a midwifery perspective. Um, I think but, I would really like that. I think I would really like that. Well, I, I said, I just recommend you go into, um, I'll give you ways that you can research more. I've been really um, diligent about writing out a rubric so you can see what the skills are and where you are proficient and emerging proficient or advanced. Um, I do also have a understanding the baby's experience rubric, and it's it's just for you to get like these are the things I want you to know. And a lot of it, what a lot of my passion has been prevention and treatment of trauma right away. I don't want people to wait until they're in their fifties to get treatment, um, and that's what this model is about. It's about it's about treatment. Um, prevention and treatment right away, as soon as possible. Um, if I had my way, every hospital would have one of our professionals in it. But Absolutely. I think I, I wish somebody was there, you know, you know, everybody here could say we wish somebody like you was there when we mm -hmm. you know, were born and how different our lives could have been as a result of that, you know, just watching uh, yeah. your slides. I, I absolutely agree. And um, yeah, don't get me started. Uh, you'll get, you'll be sorry. You'll be sorry. <laughs> All right. That's it. You, you answered the question. So thank you so much. And I'm sorry for being late, but I was working and I tried to get here as soon as possible. No, so no worries. Thank um, you for accepting me in a half hour. Uh, you can always contact me if you have questions. Okay. Uh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we're getting on to nine o'clock. So I'm gonna see, are there any final burning questions or <laughs> I'm looking around the space here, Kate, Laura, how has this sat with you? You all okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yes, I'm, I'm okay, but I understood that the March is already full, the March. Uh, oh no, I, we yeah. could take, we could take, I think we can take two more people. That would be our maximum, maximum. How, how many people? Maximum, maximum, nine people. Okay. Like I, that's how many, like we work in triads. And so I have a teaching team and I, we do a lot of breakout rooms. And so uh, I don't want it to be too big. And I do a lot of, harvesting and, and 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 listening to you so it's um it's important for me not to have too big of a group sure. and in the actual professional training i'm only taking 12 people okay and and then the costs if you can send them to me later i can yeah i can just say to everybody here that everything is 550 dollars a module um, so five hundred um, and the um, the clinical day is optional and it's a sliding scale for that day, 75 to one hundred and twenty five dollars that day. But um, I try I try and make it um, as affordable and reasonable as I can. Um, when Lois joined me and I said I wanted to do this. She said, you have to make it reasonable. 
<laughs> for working people. Yeah. And so we have as much as we can. It's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so that people can go home to their families. Yeah. And how many modules did you say there Six. are? Six modules plus the foundations course. Six. And uh, what about the fun? Is the foundation course in March or? Yes, that's four days in March and four days ah, in May. Okay. We, we, we teach them continually just to, because you may or may not want to do this. That's why I offer it. Uh, you And you may, you have to get a sense of it, whether or not this is for you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and Kate, how much is the foundations course? Same as four hundred five hundred and fifty dollars. Five hundred. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 modules in the the full course include two Thursday nights. Uh, where you can come and we can we practice. I give you skills to practice and we can debrief what your some of your clinical experiences are in between modules and you get homework. Um, so it's just a chance for you to feel our support and deepen and get so it, I forget how many hours it's like um, like 25 or 26 hours per module. Yeah, thank you, Marsha. Thank you, everyone. Well, we're trying to complete here. And um, I think that um, you all can email me. I'll be emailing you these the, the link to this recording and a few other things. And Lois, did you want to tell us a birth story? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I have a I, ha I just have a short one. Uh, I have been uh, doing childbirth preparation for a long, long time. And I know some of you do that too, and I enjoy it so much. So in the classes that I, I do, I share lots of information about from the pre and perinatal field with uh, people who are coming. And um, I had a couple that came a couple of years ago where she was uh, an insulin dependent diabetic and they were having their first baby. They um, were a very, very solid couple and very supportive of each other and very enthusiastic about their baby. So she, it's the one time I've ever had a husband be so involved in supporting his wife in his partner in so many ways. For instance, he would cook her dinners um, with foods that were um, in alignment with what she needed for her diabetes. He would do that for her quite regularly. He would often even make her lunches. And she got to the end of her pregnancy, everything had gone beautifully. Um, and I just want to weave this a little bit for you to give you an idea of the kinds of things that families encounter. So she went to a practice, which is a good practice in our hometown. It's where I used to work. And, what, and she was pressured to be induced, uh, to have her labor induced because of being a diabetic even though it was well controlled and the baby's size was within normal limits. And one of the midwives, I think very highly of her, but she said to this woman, you really should be induced or your baby might die. And I have to tell you that Kate and I listened to lots of birth stories and uh, things like this are more common than you would think. The language that we use and how we say things is so very important. I understand what that midwife was trying to say, but it's that she didn't give the, the mother-to-be the space to talk it over. And um, it was a poor choice of things to say. So the mom waited another half of a week and she didn't go into labor on her own and she did agree to be induced. 
She did the breathing and relaxation with her husband throughout her whole labor. She did not take any pain medicine. I taught them how to use hypnosis for their labor. And her request in her birth plan was, I do not want an episiotomy unless it's absolutely necessary. And you all may know that's making an incision at the to make an opening in the vagina. And she did not want that done. So her midwife worked with her throughout the whole labor to support her. And the baby uh, came down and it took quite a long time for the head to be born because part of it was that the head was tipped. So that's in obstetrical language, that's called being asynclitic. So instead of coming true in um, the uh, vaginal opening, the baby's head was tipped. And the midwife supported the birth like this. And she did not do an episiotomy and it took longer for the baby to be born but the, the mom did not have any stitches, so she didn't tear. And I thought that was beautiful. And then the interesting follow-up to this, and this is why I'm so passionate about this whole field, because it is so holistic, was that since the baby had spent such a long time with his head tilted in the outlet, um, ready to be born, but slowly, very slowly, his head stayed tipped, kind of cocked after he was born, and he had difficulty latching because of it. So then this mother had a relationship with someone here in town who has taken courses with Kate um, in the pre and perinatal trainings. And she's also a physical therapist. And so this mother took her baby to this woman, the physical therapist, and within two treatments, she corrected the baby's head, the, how the head was aligned with the spine and the baby latched and there were no further problems. So that is an example of um, why we feel that this work is so important. It's all connected. Um, and the more each of us who are working in different fields can learn about what overlap there is, why this all links together, and then especially how we can link up with other providers. Even if we do, don't do a certain kind of care ourselves, we can know, oh, this is a wonderful person for you to see, to work with this issue that's come up because of your labor. So it's very holistic. And, um, and I think very, very potentially very healing. Okay, well, thank you, Lois. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you, Heather. And thank all of you for coming. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna call it a night. And we'll uh, we'll see you all. Hopefully, uh, if not in training and something else that we offer, please let us know how we can support you. Okay. Thank you for coming, and we wish you well. Thank you so much to both of you and everyone. <laughs> Thanks so much. Yes, Thanks, thank Lindsay. you. Thank you. Bye.